Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this Halloween matchup. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Indianapolis Colts under the lights on Monday night. These folks in the Circle City, they love their Colts and they have packed the house tonight as we welcome you to Lucas Oil Stadium in downtown Indianapolis. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Indianapolis Colts. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that can have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. started now the kicker Chris Boswell and we are underway from Indianapolis no run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25 so the Colts now coming out for their opening drive leading them out in his second NFL season after such a decorated career at the University of Texas here's Sam Ellinger and when his name comes up, the first word that goes along with it, winner. One of the winningest quarterbacks in the University of Texas history. He may have been a late round draft pick. People may question his arm strength. But one thing you don't question, his leadership and his competitiveness. Trusted as a captain at Texas and a great voice in the locker room, no matter what team he's on. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Nice job there forcing that incompletion. This is going to be a fun battle throughout this game. Watching him try to take away that area of the field. On play action, Ellinger. Campbell making the catch. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. From the gun, here's Ellinger. Back to the same target, Campbell. So the completion gets him just a yard, and it'll be fourth down. So on fourth down, Matt Hawk on to punt for Indy, and back deep, Gunnar Olszewski. Taken in at the 22. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense making its way out, and we get a look at the player drafted to succeed Ben Roethlisberger as the franchise's quarterback. Knows a lot about the city. He's a rookie out of Pitt, Kenny Pickett. In the 2022 NFL Draft, the worst-kept secret of all, the Pittsburgh Steelers were locked in on taking a quarterback. Everyone knew it. The question was, out of all the possible names, who would they select? In the end, they took the hometown kid from Pitt, Kenny Pickett, who heads next door to lead the Steelers. Definitely some huge cleats to fill. Replacing Ben Roethlisberger, there's pledge to help the youngster get his feet wet in Pittsburgh. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, Hopefully get to the perimeter later. Let's face it, you can do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. And this returnable for Hines. it will be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. 
And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit jumpy. Oh, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> Throwing again on second and ten. Ellinger looking sideline incomplete. We're following the play here. Now we've got an injury. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Here's Ellinger. And that will be incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get on track in this one. On is the punter, Hawk, as he gets this one away. Olszewski now to return. So possession goes over here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that can put your team in some jeopardy? Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. On the draw, it's Harris. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That third down conversion, good for 23. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field. And a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 38. Harris running straight ahead. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply the offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, hey, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. Third and two, pick it. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Perfect example of the kind of attitude you have to have to play defensive back in the NFL. You want to be the only defender around, and you want them to challenge you. And on that play, he came through. They're going for it. This is Harris. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. And the drive stays in motion with a nice eight-yard pickup on fourth. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Drive. Here's second and 11. Well, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there. As that's batted down and incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. Got his man. 
It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Kenny Pickett finding Pat Fryermuth. And the Steelers will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. That's a good hard running there as he'll push his way forward for about five. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Ellinger to throw. A throw for Putman is intercepted. Picked up by a Keller Witherspoon. And the Steelers are going to take possession of the football. Carter, I think this one went awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They hand this off to Harris. They find some open field here. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight yard line. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Well, it's Monday night and we're ready to rock. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two as they go to work on a first and goal. Pick it now from the gun here. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive. 
Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Had no command that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, after incompletions on first and second down, it certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 that time, and a Colts first down. Well, I see a defensive coordinator get upset and throw his headset. This is the kind of play that'll do it. You force third and long. This is almost sort of a give up play. You're just hoping to get something positive, and it winds up breaking big, and they convert on third down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. To throw is Ellinger. And a throw for Pittman is intercepted. Picked up by Cameron Sutton. And the Steelers are going to take possession of the football. Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it. And the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady game. Harris going to get it again on second down. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 75 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Anyone who wants Najee Harris at Alabama knows the kind of strength that this guy runs with, and he's continuing on that path here at the next level. And with a guy his size, you have to know defensively that arm tackles aren't going to fly with him. You have to be able to wrap up, or else he can just brush tacklers aside like they're not even there. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And that's the big fellow's MO right there, running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Now Pickett will look to pass it. Flush. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Dio Dangbo. Credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. First and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of him. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? Pick it a look to throw it here. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Kenny Pickett fighting Pat Fryermuth. And his guys now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron, had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Extra point put through by Boswell, and yeah, that makes our score 17-0. Chris Boswell, the kickoff for Pittsburgh. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown.
The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to take possession of the football. I'm not sure that the wheels, Charles, are coming completely off, but they're shaking a little bit. That's three interceptions, and now interceptions here on back-to-back -back drives. And I think about what a Hall of Fame coach told me that he always told his teams, when a mistake happens, just move on to the next play. Let it go. Hard to do when you've thrown this many interceptions. That's exactly the attitude that has to be adopted. Here comes the Pittsburgh Steelers and running back Najee Harris. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games. Maybe we need to up that a little. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. Sharp there with his feet. Gets him a little extra space. And then drop just inside the 20. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that's going to bring up third and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. They have the first down with that gain of four yards. It's a pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up an excellent field position. The last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hopes alive. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. On first and 10, it's Pickett. A quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Pickett. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. And this is intercepted, but they say out of bounds. Very close to a turnover there in the end zone. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So they get the turnover in plus territory. The drive stalls out, but still able to get three out of that. Yeah, we were able to see an offense and a defense kind of mix and match with each other, didn't we? Both of them trying to make sure that they had the upper hand and the advantage. Offense trying to get to the end zone. Defense, of course, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. And it wasn't a guaranteed lock three from where they started. So, you know, the offense has to be happy to come away with those three points. Now that should give him a spark. He's across the 40 to the 43. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. To throw on second and ten. Ellinger. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. 
Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A tall task ahead of them here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. On third down, here's Taylor. And he'll get this across the 40 and up to about the 42-yard line. It's a gain of just three, and the offense likely going to yield to the punting unit here on fourth down. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. On the return is Olszewski. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. So we've reached halftime here on Halloween. And trust me, kids, if you had to look at Charles Davis every game, you'd think every day was Halloween. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's take a look at the next-gen stats from the first half for the Steelers. And a big reason why they have this big lead, the running game. They're over 100 yards as a team, and it's been the catalyst for this offense. Final adjustments taking place in both teams' locker rooms. We're closing in on the second half. And to bring it your way, let's go back up to Indianapolis and rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. This fielded right at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And the Steeler offense ready to get going here in this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these two keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. A beautiful fake. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. 116 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. To the air on first down with Pickett. Open man here is Gentry. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. On the give, this is Harris. And for one of the first times all night, he is going to go nowhere as they bury him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. They'll come to the line here, needing nine yards to pick up the first. From the gun on third down, pick it. He finds his tight end, Gentry. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 45-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. This is Harris. 
Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Pick it, back to throw. Open man, that's the tight end, Firemuth. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's in the He's been getting two touchdowns earlier, and now he's got a first down here. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild, and here's another completion for good yardage. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. He's brought down there by Kenny Moore. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Again, it's Harris on second down. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Colts pick it up. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. We just saw the dilemma for every coach. You want them to fight for the extra yardage, but somehow continue to cover the football. Oftentimes, when you fight that hard, the ball becomes exposed. And defensively, it's obvious they're trying to be more aggressive. First tackle a little too aggressive. Second one, though, they strip it loose. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. Now they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that pay off in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities, and this is a good one right in front of them. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. A loss of four that time on the sack, and it brings up second. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be under pressure, and down he goes. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there. It's just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out. Not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. You're three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Steeler football, and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. 129 yards on the ground for him now as he's gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. 
Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. On first down, it's Ellinger. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. So a failure there to get rid of the football. I don't know in the end that it's going to matter much here with this game, but it yields another two points. Yeah, I think I'm with you. It may not matter a ton with the deficit that's already there, but like my old coach used to say, it sure ain't going to help. <laughs> it doesn't help indeed. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. On the return is Sims. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football, you're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline. They want to do it with some gusto, too. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he'll take this one for about four to the 40. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Try him with Pickett here on third down. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Pickett finding Claypool. Good for Pittsburgh first. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. First down, and they go back to Harris. 155 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They'll run. Here's Harris. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Four yards the pickup. First down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they got a little bit of a win there, but let's face it. The vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and to big yardage all night long. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So the Steelers with the football as we get your reset. 
They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. They'll run again with Harris. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it will come out to the 25. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games and we've seen our share of lopsided contests. But in almost all of them, both offenses put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Now Ellinger. And that is incomplete. And that's a moment that has been in the picture of this game. It's been, it's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops from one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. No reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. My oh man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Another try after the first down sack. Ellinger, his throw incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, but after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Desperation time. Here's Ellinger. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Steelers, they're going to take over an excellent field position. On the ground, it's Harris. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. pitch a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field, so you've got to like what you
you saw? What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one.